Welcome back to Forgotten Gear Restorations. Today we're going to tackle a 1961 Fender Showman that was famously owned by one of the three original guitar players in uh, the mid-60s surf band, The Astronauts. They hailed from Boulder, Colorado. And if you're watching this video, you probably know who they are. Let's find out what's up. All right, Senor Mel. I wonder if I should start using the earbuds again. I don't know, but uh, this is neither here nor there nor anywhere. Uh, pardon the noise in the background. I have the uh, uh, the little Tektronix warming up for duty. I uh, should have did that earlier, but oh well. So I've got your 61 Showman up on the bench. Uh, we're going to do a quick um, e external assessment um, using some primitive techniques um, before I jump in. Uh, I just mentioned to you offline that um, I need to order a new quad of uh, 6L6s. And we'll get that going, um, as, as well as um, I, I had to order uh, a new set of power cords because I'm just out. Um, you guys have been cannibalizing all my power cords as of late, and that's all right. So let's kick this off with um, a quick power up on a current limited supply. And while you guys are watching a beautiful little light there, I'm going to be uh, observing... Now it's in standby mode. I'm going to be observing uh, the current limiting bulb. And we had a quick flash. That's fine. Let's get her off a of standby. And I could already hear the signal generator going to work. And it looks like the current settled into a nice place. Let's get the limiter off. We're back at full power. Let's see, we're running the normal channel. Nice. All right, and I'm sweeping up to 800 hertz. We have a little bit of noise in your tone controls. A lot of thunder on that normal channel. Some noisy controls. Let's move over to the vibrato channel, or vibrato, as uh, Uncle Doug would say. intensity at the lowest speed setting. In fact, it loses the effect altogether. Picks it up around three. It's lost at 10. Comes back around eight. So not the worst sweep I've ever seen, but we'll see if we can get you some more range across the dial. So let's break her open and see if we can go on a little fact-finding mission. Now, again, um, we're going to ignore the fact that there's a mismatched quad of tubes out back. Uh, we're also going to ignore the fact that we have a crusty old power cord that needs to be replaced. There's a lot of work that we can get done in the meantime, so we'll focus on what we can do. All right, yes, I'm still dealing with a white balance issue. Um, with all of this fresh and juicy sunlight that we have uh, greeting us from the, the nice little window here. So let's get these old guys off. Oh, GE, GE, uh, JJ. 
That is a old Bugle Boy, old Amperex. GE and GE, right? Yeah. Wow, very nice. And I'm so reluctant. Oh, I don't like, um, oh, I don't like handling it. These old Amperex and in particular, just super, super fragile, um, the silk screening, it, it just turns into like baby powder. It's just like that. But yeah, here's the back of your 61. And then you can see here that you have three RCA 5881s remaining out of the original quad. You've got a JJ 5881 there. Uh, the other 62 blonde, uh, blonde error showman amp that's, uh, that's behind me has a quad of uh, groove tubes or EH. I think they're groove tubes, some new newer groove tube 6L6 GCs in there. And you could readily put GCs in there and get a little more headroom, uh, depending on what your uh, power transformer is gonna deliver on the plates. But yeah, so I, I'm going to, um, I'm actually going to carefully extract the chassis. Um, we'll flip her over and uh, check out the doghouse and all that stuff. So stand by. All right, Mel. So it looks like this amp was serviced and I did take a peek inside. It was serviced uh, in the 90s. These are um, the Sprague Adam caps that were in vogue between uh, the early 90s and I would say... 2000 up to 2010 these guys reign supreme on the interwebs um let's see here um so your power transformer looks original the choke dated to 61 um, i'm unable to read anything off of the power transformer so i don't know if i said output uh, initially i'm losing my mind but yeah output's okay uh, this one is also factory, um, but then I'll have to uh, validate this one just because I'm used to seeing the stamping on the on the bell cover here. So I'll go ahead and get some measurements off of these atoms here. I didn't hear anything untoward when I was uh, making the initial assessment, but we want to see what they're doing. Um, and then it looks like somebody had a, a, a rotary in, engraving tool. And it reads the shell something. And then it kind of goes off into nothingness. The shill. LL. And then there's some unintelligible engraving here that I, I can't discern what it is. And then, I, and then, hey, look at this. Some guy said, hey, this is the uh, anode end, which is nice, I guess, huh? In case you forget... Um, let's take a peek, um, and, and I'll see what these guys are going to do on the scope, or I'll just actually just use the meter for this one. Um, but yeah, all original preamp tubes save this little JJ here. So super interesting. All right, Mel, so let me just highlight something. Now, um, the sound sample you heard prior, uh, that part of the assessment... Wow, this is still in great shape. Um, we had something plugged into the input, and here we don't. So check this out. Tone control is on 50%. Let's bring the volume up. You hear that? That's just a power cord thing. Um, but it could also be, I mean, this here, It could also be an open jack. So um, when I flip it over, I'll, I'll take a look to make sure it's grounding. And then, then here is your vibrato channel, which is perfectly quiet. So 
check that out. Let's have a look. And yeah, you're you're getting some some decent leakage out of these atoms. One of them's leaking as much as two volts. You don't want to see any more than five, ten milliamps or millivolts. And these are testing okay. But the two on the end, on the preamp end, are leaking pretty heavily. So I would just recommend changing the entire bank because the other ones are just right behind. All right, so sorry for the hand cam and I should have certainly had a chopstick ready. But I didn't. Um, so these caps here, the, the whole thing was serviced in the 90s, by the way. Um, and the guy did a pretty good job. Um, so as we just discussed, I will be doing a full cap job on a filter pack on the, the top side of the amp. Um, but starting from the, the preamp end, so these caps are 40, 47 microfarads, where they should be 25. And these are rated to 10 volts. Um, they're going to see up to three volts max. So that's fine, but it's just not the right rating. So I want to change these out. The guy did a, a nice job on installing them, however. Um, and then you can see he left uh, the blue moldies and his yellow astrons in place, which is nice. Well, it looks like we had a little dog friend in the house at some point. I'll get that out. Uh, we have a an old Sprague here, uh, a two microfarad cap, which is totally fine for this particular position. And we have another Astron here. Um, and, and then we have, you can see these two orange drops, these are 716 P type caps here. And then uh, looking over here on the bias board, wow. So um, I'm looking at, uh, you know, more spray atoms here, and these are fine. I'll, I'll take a look. I'll probably change these out just because. Um, but we have a resistor here. And then it looks like here, there's a bridge. There's, there's an actual bridge here that would really bypass this resistor. So I'll see what's going on here. Uh, then we have the original, we have the original diodes uh, here, which are very stout. And then we have the control panel here. And then, oh, yep, sure enough, look at that. Now remember how I said there was probably an open jack? See that guy? This right here is the ground. And it's supposed to be contacting the tip here. You see the tip? It should be touching like this guy is, but it's not. Um, oftentimes, it's really hard to get these guys to come back together. And this uh, this no normal channel is being used a lot. It's, it's kind of difficult to get these guys to come back together by bending. Um, I'll see if it's possible. If it's not, then I'll have to replace that. And then this guy here is looking pretty good. You can see he replaced that one meg resistor. And then, on, I'm sorry, on this side, it looks like some 1% Dales were put here. And there's nothing wrong with that. So I'd, I'd say this tech, um, this tech did a good job. Um, he, he, he put some unconventional values in uh, for the cathode bypass caps. And he did replace a few of the carbon comp resistors that are on the main board here. Um, and that brings me uh, to this guy right here. Kind of a, a glaring, a, a glaring thing to behold. Um, this, uh, this power transformer is not original. Um, and then you can see that it looks like in installing it, he might have, uh, whoever did this, whenever they did it, because there's no info on it. I'll, I'll take some measurements, however. Um, 
they they kind of went uh, they kind of went overboard with trying to locate uh, the holes for mounting. And then they use these washers. They should have washers here regardless, but they kind of use the washers to, to add some stability because there's, there's a bit of metal missing that otherwise wouldn't be. And again, it's okay. It's just a little sloppy is all, but it's okay. Um, we're going to get this power cord out of there. I'm going to disconnect this uh, quote-unquote death cap. Kind of cool that they put the solder joint for that thing on the inside of the chassis. On the ladder amps, you'll have a, a hole drilled through the chassis, um, and, and then that lead will be passed through it. So pretty cool. And then you can see here, uh, attack solder joint on this resistor, which um, I, I may address that, but it's it's not causing any issues now. But I'll see if I have this value on hand, and I should, and I'll probably just replace it just for peace of mind. So, um, and then going through uh, the grounds here, look nice. You'll kind of see those separating on some of these amps, and then I'm not really seeing any corrosion there along the, the base plate or the base of this brass grounding plate. And sometimes you will have that where you'll have to remove everything from the control panel and then clean underneath here so you have a good a good um, secure mechanical connection to ground and there should be like zero ohms between that and the chassis. But uh, we'll go through here. Um, let's see. Where's the center test? So this guy looks like um, looks like we have a using the center tap from the transformer on the heater on the heater winding there, and that's okay. Um, once we have a, a proper quad of tubes in there, if there's any hum uh, that needs to be dialed out outside of that in those caps, then we'll take a look at that last. Um, but yeah, hopefully I don't need to replace this jack, but to be honest with you, it's already bent. It, it's already fatigued. Um, and, and then we'll just see. We'll just see um, how it how it comes out. And that's about it for this side. So we have our orders there.